Hi everyone, I'm Toluca from Markers and Minions, and it's been a while since I've hopped on for a live video, um, but I'm happy to be back. I'm currently in my hotel room in Austin, Texas, um, and I actually had the printer overnight my planner to me here at the hotel so that I could approve it, show it all to you, and finally get it on sale. So thank you for for being so patient and for um, sticking along with me as it's been like up and down, up and down. Um, half the time I wasn't sure if it would even work out, but it's here, I have it in my hands, and so far it looks really good. There's one thing that I'll show you that I'm not the biggest fan of, but I'll poll you guys and see what you think, and if you, if you don't like it either, um, I can have the color changed. Um, but other than that, like just flipping through it in the last hour or so, uh, it looks pretty good. Um, another thing I'll do to like test it out is fill it out tonight as much as I can, just to make sure that everything, like the small details are all good. Um, but I've looked at it a zillion times. I had an editor look at it, so it's pretty, it should be pretty good. All right, so a little bit about this planner. This is the second time I've printed a teacher planner. My teacher planner is specific to Benchmark Advance because it has my planning templates included in the planner. So there is a template for every unit and week. So there are, what is that, 40 pages of Benchmark Lesson Planner. So it's all in here for you. Um, and then everything else is pretty generic um, for teacher planning, organizational tools and lesson plan pages and whatnot, which I will open it up and show you in a little bit. Um, some One major change that I made this year with this planner is that I redesigned the planning templates to make them work for all grades. So last year's, I could only do grades two through six um, and so it left out my K1 friends. Um, but now, I'll show you the new templates and they should work for everybody. Um, let's see. Yeah, okay, so it is heavy duty laminated. It kind of feels like a credit card. So again, it's really sturdy. It's actually a little more sturdier than last year's. Um, it's like encapsulated and then it has rounded edges here, which is kind of nice. This, this one will take you out though, be careful there. <laughs> um, the coil is a thick plastic, so um, the metal was kind of large for this book and um, made it kind of heavy and I wanted to keep it light, so it's only three pounds. Hi Steph, hope you're having a good summer. Uh, so it's white plastic. My theme for this planner is kind of watercolory, um, and then the planner is called You Got This because that is the title of our Facebook group, if you will, at the heading at the top of our group, it says You Got This. So I thought, ah, oh, that's pretty fitting, that, that looks neat. So cover is kind of like a, a bluish, light bluish, fades into purplish pink right here with little speckles of goldish color. Alright, here we go. Hi Kara, hi Gail. Alright, so inside. And I'm on an iPad, so I'm gonna have to scoot back because my screen's not as big. Alright, so the inside cover is gonna be this pretty blue. And then the first page is your Meet the Teacher page. This is where you'll have all of your information. Um, if you're if you leave your plan book somewhere, you know, your staff meeting or whatever, people know exactly who it belongs to. Here's where you can record any kind of websites or usernames and passwords, any kind of login credentials that aren't, you know, super top secret, of course. And then this part are my goals as a teacher this year. I kind of wanted to throw in this piece here because I know at the start of the year, at least for me, like I, I like to set an intention and say like, okay, I need to grow in this area or I want to focus on this or this is what I want to do for my kids. So this is kind of a nice anchor here to, um, reflect back on throughout the year. Hi Maria. Thank you. I'm trying to grow my hair out. I got the mom highlights, meaning I told her don't take them all the way up here because I'm not going to be able to come back again for like a year. So start them here so they already kind of look grown out, but it's like supposed to be that way. <laughs> so thank you. Um, and then I have some pretty quotes going on throughout the whole plan book. All right, 
right, so the one thing that I wasn't so sure about are these colors here. Um, I intentionally picked, you know, um, blue and orange and green and these colors, but they're a little bit more um, like bold than I thought they'd be. And the, the planner itself has a lot of pastel colors. So the other option is just making them white, like white tabs with, um, you know, the black words, and that might look cleaner. So I'll run a poll afterwards and see what you guys think. The next spread, the next page is going to be the academic calendar for 2019-2020. So here's where you can highlight your blocks for breaks or your block for testing, circle start dates, whatever, highlight days off. We have a vote for white. Yeah, okay, that's kind of what I'm thinking too. Okay, important dates here. This is where um, you can put field trip dates, breaks, testing dates, birthdays anything that you'd like to remember, meetings, etc. Hi, Nicole. Okay, and the next spread is gonna be a communication log. So anytime that you have to reach out to somebody for whatever reason, um, you can log it. So any kind of notes from that meeting, who you reached out to, this is good for keeping track of like, uh, you know, the good call home or the good note home or good email home or whatever, um, so that you just have a, a, a reference uh, so that you can kind of make sure that you're, in that example, sending notes home to everybody or reaching out to various parents for things. So there's two pages for that. And then this is my sub plan master page. So this page, these two pages you could fill out as much as possible, but then this is gonna be like your master, so you're gonna to wanna to copy this, and then you have it ready to go every time you've got a sub. So this is like some information. A lot of this will stay the same. Um, the variables will be like um, the specials today or anything you've got going on that day. Uh, you, would talk, you would write about your student and class information if you've got any sort of like special needs or so-and-so uh, doesn't need to ask to go to the bathroom, they can go whenever they want to. Or um, I have something worked out with this student at, you know, just before lunchtime, whatever it is. Any information about this kids or the class can go here. And then you've got a space here for procedures and management. So just how you run your classroom or how you'd like your sub to run the classroom that day. And then this page is gonna be your um, sub plans. So I always just write the time block here, briefly describe what they're supposed to be doing here. Um, this is kind of like the outline, the frame, and then what I typically end up doing is just uh, putting this on top in addition to like any worksheets or pages uh, that are starred or post-it noted underneath it, um, just so it's all clean and organized for the, the sub. And then down here is a space for the substitute to tell you how today went. So just so you have something to come back to. Um, it, I find that when I do this, I get a nice detailed report. Otherwise, a lot of the times I'll come back and I don't always have that detailed report. I'll just say like, it'll just say like, it was a great day or, or whatever. But I kind of like to know what, what students did well, who I might need to talk to, what was covered, what wasn't, etc. Hi, Kelly. Okay. And the next spread is going to be the year plan. So it's two pages here. It spreads across. And it's for each month. It's kind of like a curriculum map. So you, you, talk, you write about, um, you know, what you want to cover in math or ELA, science, social studies throughout the year. So just this is really helpful at the start of the year to help you um, map out roughly when you want to cover certain topics. Okay, and then we get into our templates, planning templates. So the unit overview template looks like this. So you've got space for your essential question, all three weeks of your close reading skills or your comprehension skills, and you can still, when you're planning this, you can still put your spiral, 
um, your asterisks, the, all the annotation symbols that I have taught uh, in planning next to the skill there. And I'll probably be using these next year as I'm doing my planning because uh, I kind of, I'm excited about them. Um, spelling and phonics skills, so whatever your pattern is. Your grammar or language skills here. And then your writing. So I left a bunch of space here because in the national edition of Benchmark, you're not just going to have like informative writing. It's you've got a lot more going on. So I made more space here to accommodate those national teachers and California teachers. What I was thinking for us here is we can still write the writing type, but then you can also jot down like what the prompt is if you wanted to. Or write a little bit more information about what type of writing they're going to be doing. Brianna, if we bought the digital version for our computer last year, will this version be an update available for it? No, so I'm making this separate. Um, I haven't finished the digital version for this yet. I started it at home. Um, when I get back from Texas, I'll continue with it. And it'll be listed as a separate, um, a separate planner. Okay, and the weekly, weekly planners look like this. So we've got our phonics focus, so your spelling pattern with space for words your language focus, and then I created the space here for any additional words, like vocabulary and high frequency words. That was something that I saw based on feedback. People wanted a little bit more space for those words. We are reading here, so you put your text title here. And then for each of the days, I kept it broad, so it's close reading, comprehension, foundational skills. So that can be phonics, spelling, um, down in the younger grades, you have a ton of things that would fit here for each day that are different than in the upper grades. So that's why I called it foundational, um, to make it a little bit more um, usable for all grade levels. And then your writing focus. So whatever your lesson is for writing that day. And down in like K1, for example, you have a new thing every day there. You know, write a key detail write a whatever it is okay it's different every day so there's all five days there and then you have these templates for every single week for every unit so like i said it's in t it's 40 pages in total so it's all 10 units okay so now we get to the monthly spreads uh, this is a change that I made from last year. I included the monthly spread with the weekly lesson plan pages. So last year I had like the calendar, which was August to um, July, and then I had the lesson planning pages, but I thought it would be less flipping and a little bit more um, consistent to have it all under its own tab. So this year the planner has like a bunch of tabs for each month, so it's quick to find your place. So the monthly spreads, I love the monthly spreads, look like this. They all have their own color. I'll try to back up a little bit. And I'm in front of a giant window that's overlooking Austin, so sorry about like any glare. Um, okay, so it's two pages. They're dated, so no more writing the pages or the dates in the little boxes or not little boxes on a couple of pages where there were misprints uh, in last year's planner. Um, every page has this like pretty little watercolor spot and you can write down here any topics you're going over that month, any goals you might have that month to do, reminders. You've got a pretty quote and you've got a little looking ahead to the next month space here as well. And I tried to make these boxes like as big as possible because I know on the calendar spreads, this is where I'm doing the bulk of my writing. It's nice to have these little spaces too, um, but this is where I really am gonna be utilizing. So I tried to make these boxes nice and big. Mm, I'm loving all the templates. I'm going to feel so organized. It's gonna make my life so much easier. Thank you. Thanks, this is what works for me too. Erin, who is this planner by? By moi, me. 
Um, Pam, when can we order them? So I listed them on my website. Like I used the Markers and Minions teacher planner listing from last year and I just changed the date and updated the description. The pictures aren't, aren't updated yet because I haven't photographed this yet. But um, I did list it on there. I wrote that I changed the inventory to 250. So you can start ordering now. Um, once I go through it tonight and you know look over everything and send feedback to the printer, I will approve it. And then they said it takes 10 to 12 days to print all the copies and do everything. So I can start shipping it as soon as they're done printing. Before this video, I was not at all ready to start thinking about planning, but seeing this makes me actually, oh, hold on, see more, makes me actually want to. <laughs> Thank you. Aww. I'm sorry, I just joined. Do the planning pages have spaces for other subjects? Yeah, so I will show you the, um, the actual the daily plans now. So here's our spread, and then you go right into the daily um, pages, and they're dated yay so you don't have to write in the dates there um i have went back and forth back and forth and i tried to get the printer to give me oh there goes my shoe tried to give get be some sort of deal where i could print two versions one with the days on this side and another with the days on that side long story short they won't they charge me double plus setup costs so it just became too too much so um, I know like half of you are going to be sad, but the days are on this side, so it's for horizontal planning. And the way that I use this during the school day is this is my morning up until recess. So I've got any type of morning meeting, my big cheese writing that I do with the kids. Then I use these two blocks for like math or ELA. I think it, I do ELA in the morning. So I would go right in. No, I'm sorry, math. Um, math in the morning, so here's what I do whole group for math and then like small group for math and then the rest of the day here. So this is this serves as like a break in the day. And I also made it so that there are a ton of columns going down here so that even after you've finished planning your, your daily subjects, you have space to write like any kind of notes for like staff meeting or photocopy this for tomorrow or whatever. So you have additional space at the end there. Um, yes, Erin, I do sell this. Here are the weekly pages, Cindy. Um, curious about the digital version that was mentioned a few minutes ago, Google Docs. No, I'm doing it on um, PowerPoint and I am experimenting with turning the PowerPoint into Google Slides so it can also be available on Google Slides. So far it's it's working, like it looks good. So, but I've only done like these beginning pages, I've only started working on those for the digital version yet. But I'll keep you posted, but most likely at least PowerPoint. Um, yeah, so this will, this is technically for sale already. Um, I just want you to know for sure though that like production has not started yet because I haven't called my printer saying like, yeah, it looks good, go ahead. But um, I know people have been chomping at the bit. So it is available on my website, markersandminions.com. Click on shop and then planner and you'll see the old planner cover and the pictures from the old planner just because like I got this an hour ago and I haven't photographed it yet. Um, but it's there, it's for sale and it's like I, I'm ordering 250 this year. so. That's how many are listed on there at the moment. Okay, so you've got all the weeks already put in there for you, and then it follows that same pattern where you've got your monthly spread and your weeks already dated. Woohoo! Um, October, November, December. Each month is a different color, has a different watercolor thing. Spot, different quote down here. Mm. Okay, now at the end here are the checklist pages. Yeah, I'll go back to the front afterwards. <laughs> okay, the checklist pages. So this is the one checklist page that I had last year that I really loved and I'm putting it again in this year's. It's for benchmark tests. 
So in benchmark, you have your weekly and your unit tests, and you've got your interim tests four times a year. So here's space to write each student's name, and then you record their score for each of the tests. Unit one, week one, unit one, week two, unit one, week three, and then unit two. Um, and then you've got the interim. So you've got all your benchmark tests in one place recorded. This is your grade book, okay? And then this is something I've added um, just because I've seen it mentioned a few times in the group. People saying, hey, does anyone have like a standards tracker or whatever? Um, so I thought, eh, why not? It's just, it's a spread. I'll just throw it in there. If you like it, great. If you don't like it, just ignore it. Um, but it's basically a master. So you'll want to photocopy this and make this for each of your students that you want to make one for, that you want to track. So the student's name would go here. And then you've got the benchmark test and then you would track their how they're doing on specific standards. So it's a way to have students realize what standard they need to work on, what standard they're strong in. And then of course, every standard's not gonna appear on every test, right? So it's gonna look more like a checkerboard, but it is a way to find patterns and to help students analyze or analyze for yourself or analyze with parents. Um, of course, like online, the benchmark test analyzes this data for you. Um, but a lot of people were still asking for some sort of like visual tracker like this where it's all in one place that they can give to students. So there's that. And then I included blank checklist pages. So I use this, I use each checklist for a different subject. So like math, tests, writing, science and social studies. And then I, I put more than enough, I think. Um, I also typically use one as like a, just a generic checklist, like did so-and-so bring back their permission slip, yes or no, check. Or did they do their homework, if you wanna track homework, yes or no. Um, another way I use this was for student of the month, so I could remember who I had already selected for student of the month, because I select more than one kid per month. <sighs> okay. Um, yes, is the planner grade specific? It can, it's not, yes. It can be used for anyone using Benchmark. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> um, how many checklist pages are included? Okay, so let me count. It is your Benchmark one, the standard tracker, which is like, you know, kind of one of your checklists, and then one, two, three, four, five additional blank ones that you can use for other subjects or other things to track. Um, Lisa, hi Camacho, how many students? Uh, let me count again, but I think it's like 26. One, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36. Sorry, I was way off. 36. <laughs> um, would this work for Adelante? Yeah, it would because in Adelante you still follow the units and the weekly. So you would use these templates to fill in what your like comprehension skills are, your close reading, any kind of foundational skills in your writing. I'll show you again what those templates look like. There's a space to list any words, um, your text that you're using, and then the, the main unit page has like your essential question, so you can really look at it thematically and as an overview. <sighs> yeah, 36 is best as many of upper grades have larger classes. I agree. Yeah, I think at first I was doing like, I think I had like 26, but I figured out a way to make these um, these boxes smaller without like making it so you couldn't write in them. So there's still plenty of like writing space. Um, and then it is 36. I'm listening through headphones at the gym. <laughs> Dedicated 26 or 36. It's 36. Yes, I know for those packed classrooms. 36 on the checklist pages. And someone wanted to see the cover again. I apologize for the glare. 
um, but here's the cover. It's nice and encapsulated. It's thick. It's actually thicker than last year's. It's rounded here. Um, it's watercolory, marbly theme. And then you got this, like the top of our Facebook group. Um, and then I was talking about, thank you, Lisa. I was talking about the tabs earlier with um, on the video. I'm thinking about changing these to white because I'm not sure about these colors. Um, I do like, like the words are bigger than I thought they'd be, but I kind of like that. Um, yeah, so I might change them to white. I'll poll, I'll do a poll afterwards. Um, if we order, when do you think we would receive them? So if I approve tonight, production will start tomorrow and he said 10 to 12 days and I will make sure it's 10 to 12 days and then um, it's like it's like a hour drive away from me so I can go start picking up boxes and shipping so in a couple weeks I can start bagging these and heading to my shipping center if anyone wants to do a little shipping party with me let me know <laughs> Do I purchase this on your TPT? No, it's on my website because it's an actual physical thing. So it's markersandminions.com. All right, and I think room service is here. Just a minute. Sorry about that, guys. I'll answer questions in the comments. Thank you.